What's going on folks? This is Jagos and I want to go ahead and get net neutrality out of the way because it's been on my agenda for a while and I wrote out the script for it, but I've been busy and swamped with other things to take care of. So I apologize if it seems like I'm going to be rambly right now, but I'm going to be taking the next five to 10 minutes to sit here and talk about net neutrality, which I've been wanting to do, but I'm, I'm just better at a rant right now. The thing about net neutrality is that it is not the right issue for people to be talking about. If you're talking about net neutrality, you're talking about a lot of rules and regulations. And we live in a capitalist society almost everywhere. What capitalism means is that there is a CEO and a group of shareholders that decides what you can produce, where you can produce, and how you can produce it. We have those shareholders that basically have decisions in the types of corporations that we have. So what happens there? They want to monopolize. When they want to monopolize, what that means is they want to sit here and control prices, control what people can do, and essentially rules and regulations, they try to route around those. And that's what's been happening for the last 40 years. AT&T has been busted up by public you know officials for over 40 years and then they started merging with ronald reagan the reason that they merged with ronald reagan he was a corporate guy he was an actor he had been selling i mean you know talking to the fbi for years there's plenty of things that you can look into reagan and i don't think i just think he's a scumbag and for all intents and purposes he was just basically a dumber version of margaret thatcher in the UK so just put it like that now he wanted to have monopolized monopolization he wanted um, to get out of the good government syndrome which is something like Paul Warrick which you can look into Paul Warrick was like this campaigner against the goo goo syndrome which is good government but the point here is that he allowed banks to get bigger. He allowed everything to get bigger, saying that monopolization actually helps America, the American public. No, it does not. Monopolization never helps. You need to have at least a government apparatus or something that sits here and controls the, the government, like, say, a union. But we don't have either one of those at this current point in time. There's plenty of things I can go into on that. I'm not trying to make this a political de debate at this current time, but let's go ahead and go back to net neutrality. For all intents and purposes, um, t telephones have been merging together for the last 40 years. That gives them a lot of influence and clout with politicians. And what happens when they merge? Well, you get you know a sort of um, fascism, as some people would say, but they both tend to try to screw over the public. How do you screw over the public? Well, you be a monopoly. That's why do you think, you know, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, or anybody else can sit here and screw over the public? They have way too much money, and the most of the people in the public don't have a lot of money to sit here and fight against those types of things. So when we talk about net neutrality, we're talking about rules to sit here and control a monopoly. And we've seen what has happened with that for the last 40 years. As they've gotten bigger, they've sat here and put more money into the coffers of, say, judges. Not only judges, but also lobbied against the government and Congress, buying off politicians. And that's essentially what is going on here. So every time someone come, brings about net neutrality or screams about net neutrality, they don't know what in the hell they're talking about because... All that means is you actually need some sort of competition. Now, the big thing that is the competition right now, there is Google that is competition, but there is also something that other people don't know about, which is municipal fire um, broadband. Let's go into broad, um, Google first. Google, for all intents and purposes, kind of has a fi uh, fiber wire by press release. Wherever they sit here and announce fiber, they're going to get massive government subsidies to sit here and bring fiber, which brings competitiveness from Time Warner or Comcast or whoever else. This is one way to do it. This is one way if you have a lot of money. 
That's how people sit here and get those types of things done. But Google is just one place, one person, one entity. Um, I, I don't even want to say person, the artificial person, I guess, a corporation. Let's go with that. They fight to sit here and do things their way, but once they get rid of Comcast and become the monopolist, you'll see their behavior begin to change. That's one reason why I'm very, very leery of having one corporate entity that handles all internet for the America for any reason, shape, or form. Now, do I believe in the government doing it? Yes, because they won't have that for-profit motive. That's usually what had happened during, say, the FDR times, where he was pushing for more public input when the private market had essentially died down. Now, the private market, we can get into that later versus public. I'm really not interested in this. I'm really trying to get out as much information as possible to try to inform people about, you know, how this net neutrality thing works. You don't focus on the rules and regulations. You focus on what the players are doing and then see if that sits here and crosses with what you want to do. Now, the second thing that I want to talk about is municipal broadband. With municipal broadband, this is kind of a local public area network that can work in cities and everything where the community is actually the one that is essentially controlling the internet. This kind of has a lot of beneficial aspects. If you have more communal internet or municipal broadband or smaller internet form firms, they are going to confirm to the local market. There's plenty of ways to do it. There's a co-op model that I could probably sit here and talk about really quickly where everyone kind of invests in that and then they decide how they want to do it, how they want to build it in their community. Um, you can have the city government basically invest in that type of infrastructure. And for the most part, that works in a lot of different areas. Tennessee already has one gigabyte um, internet and it's probably one of the worst places to for in terms of civil rights and everything else. Again, politics aside, we can go into that later, but I'll go ahead and show you in the underbar what happened with Tennessee and their internet through Tom Hartman. The fact of the matter is, in my view and in my opinion, that is a far better um, and more locally oriented type business that m plenty of people can sit here and look into, can sit here and describe, can sit here and talk about. So that way it actually helps out a lot more in terms of, you know, you have to be accountable not to a national entity but to just a local entity that you might have a lot more investment in especially if it's a co-op model but i mean there's also other types of ways to do it um what at&t was actually fighting against in wisconsin was the whisk net um and i can have a link in the underbar for you for that where basically there was this great internet service that worked for the state but Scott Walker essentially destroyed it at the behest of AT&T. So that's something to keep in mind. Don't look into rules and regulations for the big boys. Sit here and make them piss their pants. If they have competition, if they have the government going against them, you know, talking about their collusion as right now Time Warner and Comcast want to really essentially um, put their own merger in place and then get bigger so they can screw over more people and make more money off of the misery of other people that is something that we have to avoid and try to take care of so that's something that i wanted to present to you all if you all like these types of stories about you know politics and everything else i can possibly go more into it the fact of the matter is stop talking about net neutrality that's a false statement and a false argument it's not what the issue is. The issue, the one thing that we should be trying to solve, the one thing that we need to sit here and do more for is to increase the competition. And you only do that, in my view, is if you have local internet that works for you, that works for the people around you, instead of going to just the national entities 
which is a fight that not a lot of people on can win except maybe the Googles, Yahoos, and others in that in that field. So take care and I'll see you all next time.